Hi everybody, Lisa Larson here. Um, I'm here with podcast Pete. Hello, Hello. Podcast Pete. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? You're looking pretty sharp today. Oh, thank comfy. you. Comfy and comfortable. I think so. It's a t-shirt kind of day. Beautiful. Beautiful. Casual color kind of day. Thank you. Nice okay. shade. Nazare from Portugal. Surfing. Oh, okay. Yeah. And do you know what, what that word means? I don't know what it means. It's a it's a surf spot in Portugal. Okay. Are you aware of it? Because Portuguese is not my language, but it looks like it has the root uh, to depict birth, like you know, nascimento. Oh um, wow! You know, uh, oh, that would different. be interesting to find out. It, Nazaré oh, yeah, is where, where the biggest waves in the world break. Uh huh. And, uh, surfers go from all over the world to go there so yeah i can see how that would mean your portuguese that. people will tell you okay well mm -hmm. hopefully so anybody out there that knows portuguese please put it in the comments for for us <laughs> okay well welcome to our i think this is our third uh episode of my podcast book is it the uh, third or is it the fourth is it the fourth? Because when we it's just it's episode did. four of what we're doing, but it's the third in the series for the ah, book. Thing. Now I understand. Now we understand. Okay, I know there was a confusion there because we didn't really hawk the book in the very first one. Okay, getting our we were getting our podcast legs. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to be talking about my series. This is part of the series for my book, Pause Talking, book. of course, in communication for an with animals. Thank I'm you very much. Book. I'm not all the way through and I'm loving it. Oh, I'm so glad. And I hope you guys out there will, will love it too. Uh, and today we're taking, what we're doing in this series is we're just taking some, some concepts and topics from the book and talking about them and answering some questions and today we're going to be talking about anxiety and ptsd and uh the title is animals hold trauma too because animals do they feel all the same things we do so um yeah i think you had some 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 questions or i do uh you know uh, first of all you know we we as laymen's view animals, uh, especially dogs, for instance, as protectors, first to act, first to protect, where we as people are more pensive, we consider parameters first and dangers. And so we don't really equate ourselves to be on the same par or level with animals emotionally. And so we're surprised when they seem emotional because hmm. we expect them to be, to have brevity, to have quiet strength and all this and and we don't the last thing we expect is they they that they store anxiety or or now it's called ptsd so if you can give us any examples of this uh you know i think that 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 the layman like me of the world would probably want to know need to know and could know for the betterment of relationships with their pets with or, or with any animals Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point because we don't necessarily usually think of animals as having those kinds of emotions, but they do. We They have all of the same emotions and fears and love and all of those things. They have all of those same things that we do. The only difference is they don't express them in the same way that we do. We expect them a lot of times to be human, but they're not human, they're animals. But they're going to be affected by the same types of things. I mean, abuse, abandonment, those types of things, they wreak havoc with animals. And, you know, it's really sad when people look at animals and they just think that they can discard them at will. Uh, and now this has happened a lot since the pandemic. A lot of people, when everything went locked down, they went and they uh, adopted animals. And then the minute they went back to work, they just took the animals back to the shelter as if they were a chair or a, or a computer or a book. It, it's it, some kind of inanimate object. 
And it's not fair and it's cruel and it's cruel to the animals because those types of things leave scars. And I've said in this podcast before about looking through their eyes and think about what it would be like to be a child, to be helpless, because that's what they are. They are children to us. They are, they are dependent on us for their food, for their health, for their security, for their home, for their love. And they get into this space where they think they have that. And then all of a sudden, somebody just up and takes them to a shelter or even worse. I can't tell you how many animals I've talked to that have just been literally thrown into the trash or thrown onto the side of the road. And it's, it's enormously cruel and it's enormously depressing and it's enormously depressing for the animals. And the same thing, I wanna bring up horses as well because Horses, unlike dogs and cats who live in our home, they are bought and sold like tools. You know, if they all of a sudden, if they can't ride, if, if they, they can no longer carry someone on their back, then they're sent off to be killed or they're sent off someplace else. And there have been horses that I've talked to who have been so traumatized that they don't even know when I say your mom really wants to know how to how to have a relationship with you because their mom, the person that calls me, isn't the one that abused them. They were abused before they came to that person. Well, your mom really wants to have a relationship with you. And they I've had courses just say, what's a mom? Mm. They don't even they don't even know because they've never had that kind of care or love. They've just always been treated as things, as property. And, you know, the thing about animals getting anxiety and PTSD and all of the things that are normal when an animal has been abused or abandoned, you know, those can be with rescue animals and bred animals alike. I think a lot of times people think that if they buy an animal from a breeder, that they're going to have, they're going to be problem free. And there's nothing could be farther from the truth. All animals are subject to this. And believe me, not all breeders, very few breeders are, are happy, healthy homes that they grow up in. Uh, so it's, it's very, very difficult and they have a very difficult time and, uh, it takes a lot of work. I mean, it takes a lot of communication. This first step is communicating with them and, and letting them talk things out because imagine what it would feel like to be in a home with someone that you love and never be able to express to them what you've been through. So a lot of what I do when I talk to an animal who has anxiety or PTSD, I look at their background, I let them tell me what's happened to them, or I look and see psychically what's happened to them so that they feel like their, their parents can understand. And sometimes just that understanding helps. Sometimes it even helps behavioral problems. We talked about behavioral problems last week. And sometimes it helps that because they under the just having the parents understand what they've been through changes the dynamic. But a lot of times it's just, you know, people want to be validated. So animals want to be validated too. So it's important to let them talk, to help them understand and to help them understand that they're never going to experience that kind of abandonment and abuse again. So I guess the insight into into building trust uh, is key. Uh, you know, again, as laymen, we don't think about that as a possibility, other than just being kind. Uh, you know, not trying to feel maybe uh, some of the hardships that that animal has experienced. So, if, if there's any tips uh, as far as insights on how 
we can arrive at maybe uh, a safer, loving, peaceful place with them from yeah. being, from just saying, hi, how are you? I'm, I'm your new owner. Uh, I imagine you've been through some hardships and, and that's it. Right, right, right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when if we have patience and understanding with what they're going through, what they've been through, then everything softens, you know, because animals are so energetic. They feel our energy. They feel what we're thinking. They feel what we're experiencing. And so to, to have us understand what they've been through really, really helps them a lot. And then what helps us in that way is not getting frustrated because a lot of times that that PTSD or that anxiety may either frustrate us on on a level of just on its own, maybe a separation anxiety, so we feel like we can't leave, or it may turn into a behavioral problem like we talked about before. And so a lot of times if if pet parents get upset about things and they they allow themselves to get more and more and more upset, then the, the anxiety raises, the behavioral problems raise, the PTSD raises and, and escalates, and then it becomes just a snowball effect. But it's all in perspective. If it's something that's that's just a small thing, then you have to help them understand or help or or help yourself understand what the anxiety is that may be causing this. What is it that's going wrong? You know, are they upset that somebody's in the house? Is has grandma come to stay recently? Has there been have the kids gone off to college? There's been a ton of there's can be a ton of different reasons why an animal will get more anxious or uh whatever or start acting out from ptsd so it's all in pers if we can keep all of it in perspective and have a patience and an understanding of where it comes from um that can help and then of course you know there's communicating through like what i do and there's energy healing and stuff like that but i think the big thing for a person, a pet parent to understand is that patience and understanding. I, I had a job uh, traveling and I lived on some property at one point and um, a large dog came on the property and and just kind of stayed in my patio for a while. So I, I gave it some of my dinner and I didn't know what else to do. And um, in the morning I was getting ready to get in my car and go to work and the dog was still in the patio. It hadn't left. And I figured, well, all right, you know, and I, I, I made a leash and I tied it to a post. Uh, so that way I decide what I was going to do with it. And I, I really, you know, I needed to give it to somebody or, or find a home, but uh, I wanted to make sure it was protected. And I came home from work that next day and um, the dog had pulled uh, a screen door off my patio sliding glass door, pulled the screen door off and chewed it metal screen door. Um, and so I had had a long day at work. I hadn't eaten dinner yet. I was grumpy and I vented. Mm. And while I was venting, shouting at this animal, the dog laid about as flat as, as a snake on the patio deck, got as low as it could get and just looked up at me like, all right, I, I knew I'd blow it. I knew I blew it. And I felt so bad, but it, it gave me the impression that that dog had been beaten before that that yeah. dog had been physically harmed in yeah. beatings. And uh, yelled it gave at me that body language. And so I felt bad. You know, it, it I had the um, Humane Society come and pick it up and find a home for it. But I'll never forget that, uh, you know, because I, I went too far. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, we don't know histories of animals, especially ones that just come and say hello one day. Yeah, and he was that desperate that he wanted to be inside with you. He didn't uh, want to be tied up. He probably had been tied up someplace else that probably yeah. just 
triggered a PTSD in him, yeah, which would make that. Him go through what he needed to be inside with you. Yeah. And you know, the, the, the bad thing is, you know, I mean, I yeah. think everybody, even the, the best animal lovers, we've all had experiences that we regret. Yeah, we you know, think, we've raised we, our voices or done uh, done something that we regret, and because now we understand more, we wouldn't ever do that again. But we still regret it the depths yeah, of our soul. We think they should know what we think they should know. Yes, yes, exactly. And yet exactly. we're the ones that have to work on the knowing end of it. Exactly, because they're just innocent beings trying to tell us that they love us tell yeah. us what they need you know they just don't know how else to tell us what they need yeah I'll never so, forget yeah that. there there are a lot of ways that that you can deal with this and and that's a, a great example of of just lo looking through their eyes and uh, like i say if you guys out there you have animals that have anxiety ptsd definitely you know there's there's the option of having them you know calling me or another communicator and and uh having them spoken to so that they have an opportunity to express themselves or uh, do some energy healing i do reiki there's other people that do other types and modalities i do reiki and shamanic healing other other people have other modalities but there's a lot of things that you can do it's it's not it's not a lost cause they can get better it's just that we have to help them get better and we have we have to start with ourselves we have well, to start with allowing them to trust us yeah i'm sure with your teachings and i didn't know they these teachings existed at one point uh, even though I've known you for years, I, I, I'm sure with your teachings, these kinds of things can be not only avoided, but um, turn into opportunities where a better experience for both the animal and the person can happen. Yes, that's our hope. That's our hope in doing this, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Our hope in doing this. All right. Well, I think we're probably getting. Did you have? A, did you have a Pete's ponderings, or was that your Pete's ponderings? Well, my my, <laughs> my Pete's ponderings involve the fact that um, you know I, I just don't. I, I've never had the lifestyle to really. Uh, I like to come and go, and and so I, I don't. I don't really want to abandon pets, and yet I, I come into contact with pets all the time. It just seems like everybody I know has a pet, either a cat or or a dog and i and i enjoy pets uh as far as encountering them uh and so you know um there's a lot of times that I, i'm communicating well and fondly with my friends and my relatives and then the pet comes along and we're out of things to say so to speak because they don't <laughs> exist yet <laughs> so that's my pondering uh it would be nice to really have a feel and an understanding and a grasp and, and and maybe an experience that's deeper than, you know, hello, let me pet your head. This is about the best I can do right now. <laughs> but that's but that's really good. That's a really good point, though. And that is, I wish more people would be like you in considering that and being altruistic in that way, because you're thinking more about the animal than you are yourself. Look, it, having any being a pet guardian an animal guardian being an animal mom an animal dad it it comes with its upsides and its downsides it's it's it it comes with certain responsibilities i mean it's the reason why i don't have a dog because i know as much as i love dogs i know that i would not be the person that would be going out and throwing frisbees on the beach and walking them all the time so I give up that joy of having a dog because I know that it wouldn't be fair to the dog. You're you don't have an animal right now because your lifestyle doesn't doesn't uh, equate to that right now, and it would wouldn't be fair to an animal. But unfortunately, there are too many people who do get animals when their lifestyles do not afford them. I do you have know? A and then the animals suffer for it. I do have a confession. Uh -oh. uh, a friend of mine came to visit me on the property and brought her Great Dane. And the Great Dane was very disciplined because that's how my friend insisted the dog be. Sit when I tell you to sit, behave when I tell you to behave, 
the woman's only five foot three. The dog is half her size already. So, okay, I can understand some, some road rules. And so my friend says, well, I'm going to take a shower. Don't let the dog run. Well, I've got 8.3 acres of, of nice hilly property. And the dog's looking out the window and looking back at me like, I'm going to love it when she goes in that shower. And I'm looking back at that dog saying, don't get me in trouble. I'm going to let you out, but be cool. And the minute I opened the door, when that shower started going, that dog was gone. I went, oh, my God, I'm in trouble now because her dogs were like her children. And they're always she always had Great Danes. And I'm thinking, well, about, you know, 10 minutes into the shower, I'm thinking, OK, I got to go find that dog. You know, and I look out the window and the dog was just prancing, galloping by. Like, thank you. I'll be back in a few minutes. Got to go. <laughs> and somehow the dog knew how long the shower existed and was at the door. And I let the dog in. The dog came in and, and laid down on the rug. And my friend came out and said, you smell like weeds. Were you out in the weeds? And I said, well, my dear, I have eight acres of weeds. I don't mow the weeds. So <laughs> we escaped. We escaped a foible. And that's my I confession. <laughs> And I could just see the dog coming in and looking at you and giving you yeah, a say we It's been her. a good day. It's been a good day. <laughs> oh, Dangerous. I wouldn't, I don't try this at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not take, do not, do not do what Pete, podcast Pete does. Oh, great, great names have very short hair, so nothing's going to stick to it. So, you know, <laughs> the dog came in with no evidence other than the, the smell. Same. Uh, well, mom knows. A mom's um, yeah. nose knows. Okay. Well, you guys, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate it once again. I hope this has given you some insight into some of your animals. If you are enjoying this podcast, um, please hit that like button and the subscribe and uh, let us know what other um topics you'd like to hear about. And once again, if you'd like my book, it's Pause Talking, A Course in Communicating with Animals. And I'll Beautiful. just say that it's uh, one, one more time that it's not just to learn to talk to animals. I've gotten a lot of feedback uh, from people who read it and have just learned a lot about animals, even though they they have no intention of communicating in the same way that I do. So yeah. uh, there's a lot of good information in there. I hope that it will help you. And, uh, and I hope you guys will come back. Thank you, Pete. And I will see you, you hopefully next week. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye.